I want to take you into that step. You all right with me to do that? I'm supposed to quit right now. It's time. But of course I'm not. I'm going to take five more minutes or so because I want to look at this Daniel chapter 6 deal. There's three or four things that causes this stuff to happen. Why did Daniel get out of the lion's den? Svetavatra. Holy fire. See? Right there. That was the name of the conference. Svetavatra. Holy Ghost. Uravashaka. I love these people. Going back, I'm going to work with them. It's in the story. They are good people. Daniel 6. Let me tell you. Here's why Daniel got out of the lines then. Verse 4. Go down in my Bible. It's uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Fifth line down. Go over about four words. It says, for he was faithful. Daniel got out of the lines then. Not because he ate beans. Not because, what's this? Not because he was ten times more wise, more knowledgeable, more spooky than the rest of them. Not because of that. Faithfulness is what got Daniel out of the lion's den. That's one of the things. There's more. What's this? Look at verse 11. What does y'all's Bible say? These men came thronging by agreement. They, were, they knew. See, people around you should know that you are one of them. I have a t-shirt that was given to me. These people made it up. You know what it says on there? I'm the Christian the devil warned you about. <laughs> it says it right on my front of my shirt. So I wear it a lots of times, long time, lots of times. I enjoy intimidating things. So it says. It says right here, these men came thronging. They knew where they were going to find him. It's very important that people, what people know about you is that they'll find you praying. Amen. Faithful praying. And making supplication before his God. And then, of course, they used that against him and because the king's pride and made a mistake. On and on and on it goes. But the king was still his friend, even though he had made a mistake. Now, verse 21, Daniel said to the king, live forever. My God sent his angel. Why did God send the angel? Because of a faithful man. Because of a praying man. A man that loved Jesus. He is known for that. Daniel is. There's this wealthy family that in our work just got saved. They're very wealthy. They ride in the back of our trucks, just like the Indians do. Only in certain socialistic ideas does, does wealth give man favor. When you think you have something that you can redeem from being nice to them. They came to us. There was this grandma. She was the heifer. She's the head. That woman was failing everywhere. Her heart, her lungs, her liver, her kidneys. I mean, it was over. We was at the end. She was a very aged lady. And she comes there. What, now what, what's this? She's in the hospital dying. Boom, it's over. Family's all been brought in. They're there. That's what they do. That's what y'all do too. So it happens. All right. Watch this. They call on the phone. Watch this. I'm, I'm always praying sometime between 4 and 5 o'clock in the morning there, a little bit after. I'm there, yeah, I'm there every day. Every day. It happens every day. Every day. No matter. It's every day. So <clears throat> they call. My son-in-law, Sean, took the thing. He comes over there with a note. He don't, they don't bother me when I'm praying because I don't like it. So they don't do it. <laughs> this family's important to our work. 
they're, they're, they're valuable in lots of ways. And he just laid it down on my desk. So and so dying, diseases. And we just started praying. We sent one of our warriors over there to the hospital later on in the day. Now watch. He walks in the room. This is intensive care, I think is what y'all call it. And all these machines are operating and they're failing, they're low. He walks in the room. Watch. Never says a word. Just walks in the room. The family's in there. Dr. Team's there. He walks in and just stops. Just looking at her. When he caught her gaze, the machines picked up. By that afternoon, she was in a private room. No, no machines. By the next afternoon, she was released healed. Do you hear me? <laughs> well, faithful, praying. There's a couple more things here in verse 22, and I'm going to stop. I was found in an amplified, it's got two words here. Innocent and blameless. You need to work on those things in your life. No matter what, stay innocent. Take it. Don't worry about it. It can't hurt you. Nothing you can do to me can hurt me. Only thing you can do is kill me. That makes me a free man. Do you understand? It's important. Faithful, praying, innocent, blameless. One more thing. So Daniel in verse 23 was taken up out of the den. Now look. And on his body, they observed him. You know, he's a, this man owns the world. He's a king. He, he owns the whole known world at that time. He's got the best physicians that there are. They're inspecting this fellow. He's the king's friend. You think they're going to overlook something? Absolutely not. No hurt of any kind was found on him because what? Why? Because he trusted God. He relied, adhered on, and believed in God. I am here to encourage you. If you want to advance in the kingdom's power, there are certain ways to go about it. It's not how much you can quote Bible. It's not how many people you know. It's about God. It's about the covenant of the Holy Ghost. It's about being faithful. It's about knowing how to pray the God kingdom prayers. It's about knowing how to walk in the Holy Ghost. It's about knowing how to give God the glory. He want to do better in 08 than you did in 07? Then listen to me. I'm helping you. Because I can. I've been trained how to. <laughs> and I'm good at it and I like it because of Jesus it's Jesus you see this lady that works for my wife can't tell you much about her because there's serious problems <laughs> it's, it's rough <laughs> but I took them in the house the whole family and they work for us and that's as far as I'm going with it she's dying what's the name of that demon typhoid or typhoid it's killing her Man, she's just, it's rough. I don't know where she got it. Some water or something. Who knows? Well, I don't know what it was. So don't trust the water. It ain't the water that helps. Y'all believe it is, but it's not. She picked this typhoid up. She's dying. What's this? She calls my wife on the phone. Watch what she says. Help me, Miss Debbie. Is that right or wrong? Miss Hogan says to me, we need to pray for so-and-so. She's dying with typhoid. We just said, in Jesus' name, God, be healed. What was it three days ago or four days ago or something? They went and did that blood test. And that doctor said, oh, I don't know what to tell you, uh, but you're healed. She, he said, that is not scientifically possible. She were healed. There ain't, and they did lots of tests on her. Can't find typhoid. It's gone. Listen, listen. You got all these ideas of how it should be. God's got an idea how it ought to be. That's the one that works.